Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he's trying to tell them. So Jesus said to them again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have light and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. So again, I apologize this morning. It's kind of the perfect storm. I showed up late and then our daily mass sacristan, Cindy Guyman, is sick. So um, hopefully everything else uh, is okay for the rest of the mass. Um, hopefully we have the tabernacle key and everything else. Uh, someone can be on alert if that comes up later. I just want to make some comments about this passage we heard from the Acts of the Apostles. One of the great things about reading the Acts of the Apostles is it's the story of the earliest days of the church. And so Acts teaches us a lot about what the church was like in the beginning. And lo and behold, the more we closely we look at it, the more we can see the connections with our church still today, the Catholic Church, right? One of the things that scripture scholars say about the Acts of the Apostles is they say it has a high ecclesiology. What scholars mean by that is they mean that, well, we know the church in the beginning of the, the beginning days of the church, everything was just really simple, right? There wasn't all this structure and hierarchy like we see in the Catholic Church today. And so they look at the Acts of the Apostles and they say, man, actually there's a really strong hierarchy. There's a lot of structures. There's a lot of connections with the Catholic Church we see today. And so it has a high ecclesiology. Because of this, some scholars claim that Acts was actually written much later than it was. And they say basically the Catholic Church kind of influenced the writing of the text. Right? Knowing me, you guys know that I think that is a bunch of baloney. But anyway, we can see some of this stuff in our passage today. Today we heard about the story of Peter explaining himself to the different Jewish Christians in Judea and in Jerusalem. And they accused him of meeting with Gentiles. And so he told them his story. Right? We know that in the Old Covenant, there was a huge divide between Jews and Gentiles, especially when it came to things like sharing a meal. Right? And so he gets accused of this. And as in, a, in, in an effort to explain, he explains the famous vision that he had in Joppa. Right? You can read about this chapter earlier in Acts. Right? Some people call it the, the pigs in a blanket vision. He basically sees a sheet coming down from heaven, and it has all of the different unclean animals from the Old Testament laws, and God tells him to kill and to eat. And Peter even refuses. He says, not to me, Lord. Right? But then the voice uh, emphasizes it again, basically showing Peter that these foods are no longer unclean, but not just these foods, but also the Gentiles. The Gentiles must no longer be seen as unclean, right? Now, something that we should take away from this. First of all, it should be a significance to us that of all of the disciples that God could have appeared to, who did he appear to? Peter, right? The rock. Some Protestant scholars say that based on reading Acts 15 a little bit later when they have the council to actually discuss the laws about circumcision, that it is James who actually makes the final proclamation of the decision that is made. And some Protestant scholars look at that and they say, see, it's de-emphasizing the role of Peter. But that ignores the fact that Peter was the original person who God revealed this to, right? And Peter is the one who brings it up for conversation later on in Acts, right? Showing the primacy of Peter. Another thing that's interesting about this passage is that not only is Cornelius and his other Gentile friends, not only do they receive the Holy Spirit and become baptized, but it also says that Cornelius' whole household is baptized, right? presuming his children 
and any infants or babies that he has. Again, it's you can see the sign of Catholicism in rooting entry into the church by means of baptism. And that entry into the church is so important that you don't wait until somebody can make the decision for themselves. You do it as soon as possible. And whoever is in charge of them can make that decision on their behalf. So there's lots of different things that we see in these passages from Acts. And as we keep going on through this book, try to pay attention. What are some of those roots of our church that you can already see here in Acts? Acts.